Hi, so this is the craft in its current uh, configuration and I am flying it as fast as it is possible. And as you can see it is not very fast. And this is due to the symmetry of lift. And uh, in ordinary helicopters you saw that by having uh, the blades flapping, the wings flapping. Uh, but this structure is totally rigid with its uh, wiring. So uh, it doesn't do that and it doesn't lead or lag. So if I try to fly it faster uh, in laterally, like now backwards towards me, it will flap back. So it will pitch up in the direction of flight, preventing me from going faster than this. Uh, and in this configuration, I really cannot do much about that. Uh, the uh, thing I did do to this craft to make it possible at all to fly that rally is to enlarge in the uh, control surfaces which gives me greater authority over the blades. Okay, I thought that I would just share with you some uh, interesting mishaps. So I'm just about to lose uh, my landing skid. It's not very uh, surprising. It was only held in place by luck and there I ran out of luck. So uh, today I have two set screws that <laughs> also is in position instead. So first I sort of panicked and thought that I needed to land, but then I realized that this was a great opportunity to, uh, to test out some new features. So I just uh, tried to keep my posture and uh, just starting flying it again and not desperately trying to land it. Because I realized when, <laughs> when I'm going to set it down there's a pretty big risk that I will um, wreck one or several of the propulsion propellers. So I thought that uh, let's just uh, try to uh, to set it down uh, without turning the power off and see if it can self-balance on the, on the main uh, tube there in the middle. And since that tube is actually not spinning, it's just the uh, propeller with wires and uh, a couple of bearings that are spinning, uh, I thought that this uh, would probably work. It won't drill itself into the ground anyway. So uh, now I'm just feeling for the, like the flight uh, characteristics about the skids and I'm trying to find a soft spot or a fairly soft spot to, to park it or pause it temporarily on uh, without turning the motors off. So here's a little bit of grass. And well, as you sort of might expect, it, it uh, actually can self-balance. Well, of course it can, otherwise it would like tip over in the air as well. But this... Uh, um, make it obvious that you could start it in, in, uh, without the skid if you tilt the motors upwards and have it like a tricopter set up first and then start tilting the motors forward to gain uh, propeller speed uh, and then take off. So, so that's uh, interesting. That opens up some possibilities. So now I'm going to set, set it down in the grass here and try to save it. And I actually managed to not broke, I break any propellers, so that's good. Okay, listen for it here. Uh, you'll hear a clicking sound in just a minute or just a second. Yep. So that's the sound of one of the servo rods going to one of the control surfaces, completely breaking off from the from the uh, control surface. I didn't know that. I just felt that something was very wrong, so I decided to just set it down where it was. And here you can see the damage. Uh, this is in the uh, latest iteration with larger control surfaces and that put a larger load on the uh, servo horn there so it simply broke off. But that of course uh, again uh, is a great setup for uh, trying out how it would fly with, with, uh, without one of the control surfaces active. I really didn't know that that happened in the air so I didn't try to fly it there. So now I'm taking off with two control surfaces working and one completely just following, follow, following the airflow. And you absolutely can feel that it has less, you have less authority over it and it's somewhat wobbly or yeah, unprecise. But surprisingly it actually can self-level and you can flow, fly it around gently with only two control surfaces working. So that's a surprise to me. I thought that I had marginal control over it in the original state, so I assumed that I actually would not be able to fly it with only two control surfaces working. But that gives me a certain amount of 
redundancy. So knowing that, uh, next time it happens, I just won't, I, I don't, I don't, won't feel the need to just immediately uh, set it down no matter what. But now I know that I actually, probably if I keep my posture, can gently slide back and land it with, a, with one servo broken or one rudder like falling off. The landing part here was a little bit wobbly though. Okay, so that was a second modo failure. And then I, I have also had a significant trouble with the, the connectors that uh, I assemble this every time and disassemble it every time I fly. So I have quick connectors to the, for the servo cables and the power cables to the motors from the hub there out to the, uh, yeah, I'm happy with that, <laughs> to the, yeah, this one, to the, uh, to the wings. And, oh, yeah, this is not supposed to be able to happen. So it, I have some glitches uh, from time, one time to another and that's, um, very suboptimal. I really should change those connectors. They are simply not good enough for, for this. Okay, so here I am trying out a slight anhedral version. Um, so the wings are pointing down uh, and uh, I would just, I would, I'm just uh, trying out different setups just to or different configurations just to see what it gives now i'm trying to get rid of, rid of the uh, flat back that the symmetry of lifts uh, gives and and there's this shouldn't be the solution either but i wanted to try it out in a way but it's still there so i can hover it nicely but i can't really move it laterally in any meaningful way And I can't tell you how many times I have been saved by the air cushion, the the, uh, the ground effect. Uh, I can. It feels like I will crash, but I, in the last second it swoops up and uh, and saves itself. So that's great. And here you can see it's a significant dehedral version. I just want to try out that as well to see what that gives. And I really thought that I would break the structure when I tension the wires but <laughs> to my surprise it actually hold for this i mean it's a uh, pretty weak aluminum and i have been welding in it so it's uh, even weaker actually but it's uh, enough elasticity left in it to, to cope with this so yeah as usual hovering is uh, is a breeze but actually going laterally is still uh, problematic it starts out here pr pretty promising but it gets into the uh, once I get a forward or backwards like speed, uh, the dissymmetry of lift kicks in and gives the flap back action. And uh, yeah, the flight controller can uh, can manage if you just let the sticks go and, and give it a little bit more power. It levels out again, but it's uh, still there. It still behaves nicely and, and does its, uh, you know, swirling, hovering action nicely. But it does look sort of stressed. Okay, so time for the next test. Here I'm adding a surface underneath. Uh, it could be like a possible flotation device later on, a future flotation device. It would be nice to be able to land on water. And uh, considering that it can self-balance um, in the starting or uh, landing phase, um, it might be possible to have a flotation device in the center like that, if you can pivot the motors upwards and transform it into a like static tricopter. Okay, so this results in the worst flight, I think, uh, as of yet. It really yeah, starts to oscillate and become very difficult to, <laughs> to, to master. Uh, yeah, I'm not doing this with my sticks. I'm just trying to gently fly towards me, like backwards from the, from the uh, machine's point of view, but it doesn't want to do that really. 
And again, the uh, air cushion, the ground effect here saves me. <laughs> yeah, just swoop in for landing. <laughs> I could have broken that so badly, but hey, it didn't break. Okay, so here I'm um, tackling the dissymmetry of lift with the, <laughs> the helicopter way. I add another rotor. Uh, I mean, the helicopter doesn't have the tail rotor for dissymmetry of lift, but that's the engineering solution for a force that you have want to counteract and it's it's kind of a crappy solution both in the helicopter and in this uh, situation I mean they made it work in the helicopter I might be able to work to make it work here but it's still not the proper solution because it really uh, totally destroys the um, simplicity of the original idea so I really don't want to go this route uh, some ideas are good on paper but when you just see them and try them out in real life, you just uh, feel that oh, it ruins the whole thing. So yeah, uh, I just wanted to try it out and uh, I couldn't easily make it better with this device. Uh, so it's hooked up to the uh, elevator stick. So when I push it, the elevator forward, I'm going forward, it starts spinning in one direction, counteracting the, the symmetry of lift in that direction. And when I pull the stick backwards, the propeller spins the other direction uh, given opposite force so it's 90 degree offset from the uh, from the direction you're flying in uh, and it's a brushed uh, gearbox there that does that job okay so here's the latest iteration here I'm enlarging the uh, control surfaces with 50% basically giving uh, uh, making it possible to, to handle the dissymmetry of lift a little bit more forceful so this slow flight is actually the most successful uh, kind of you know lateral movement I have achieved so far. So it doesn't look like much, but uh, it is actually a little bit of a achievement in this uh, very slow rotating wing structure. Uh, well, I'm not like you know pleased with it, but it's better than than not uh, having these larger surfaces. And here I accidentally fly into the tree. It's kind of durable. Let's see it again. I just want to show that. This is stupid, but I just want to feel how rigid it feels in the air. Uh, and it actually does feel pretty rigid. It's sort of strange you know, feeling. It feels heavy and solid up there. Yeah, my, I'm, I'm acutely aware of the danger here. The propellers really would damage me a lot if I got struck with, with one of them. Okay, so that was fun. <laughs> I just couldn't help myself doing that. And uh, someone commented that they wanted to see the control surface movement from the wings perspective and that's a good idea. I was actually planning on doing that sooner or later but uh, maybe sooner. So this is the original control surface size so it's, it's it looks very small from this perspective but it's not that bad but it's uh, like one and a half meter away from the GoPro camera here and uh, yeah it becomes obvious that I need more authority com to compensate for yeah for like the symmetry lift or other factors as well because the control surface is, is really working hard here and I'm just hovering it it's like standing still in the air and it looks looks very stable but you can see that the control surface is uh, it's working pretty hard there. So uh, this is the larger control surface. Just for reference, it's 50% larger. Uh, I'm not sure about the settings, so that might differ a little bit. It's just interesting to see. Um, sorry about the sun here. It really makes it more difficult to interpret what we're seeing here. But It makes pretty significant changes as well, but this time I actually think I'm flying a little bit away from the containers in a while. Oh no, that didn't, uh, that wasn't part of that clip. And I'm just ending with, a, for fun here, just a slow motion clip. It's pretty long, so I don't expect anyone to, to watch it, but, uh, but I want to have it here as a uh, reference point. And you can clearly see how um, the control surfaces goes into their different sections of control. There, are, I mean, this is set up like a hexacopter. So there are six sectors, and it's very distinctive that when the uh, servo gets the new signal from the new sector, all they, although they do relate to each other, they can differ a bit. 
So you can see the flapping action, the sudden flapping action of the control surfaces there when it's going through its uh, revolution. Okay, so uh, anyway, this is uh, the uh, current state of development and I'm really having a good time and I'm so surprised the craft is in one piece. I, as you saw earlier, I have been hitting some trees. The propeller didn't actually break from that, surprisingly. Um, and I have landing, landed it uh, like hard and I have, I have flew into the container once as well. It's not a not on the video, uh, but I did a dent. I made, made, made a dent in one of the rotors. Um, but I haven't had any significant crash that had rendered me like hours of rebuild. And I'm very thankful for that because it makes the iteration so much quicker if I don't have to like rebuild it every time. And I think it's very much due to two, two things that I haven't crashed it. And one is I only test fly this when it's dead calm because that's the only situation it would work in and that really helps <laughs> flying things when it's like really windless days and also the low wing loading seems to save it often uh, when I come in at band, bad angle or attitude or, or just um, yeah uh, somehow you know uh, cl getting close into the ground in a bad way the uh, the air cushion under the wing really seems to pitch it up in the last moment, uh, helping me leveling, it, leveling the craft out and landing it on its skids. So, so yeah, two, two things that really seems to work for this craft uh, and it would probably be, be the same if you made a full-size version that it's, it's sort of its own parachute <laughs> because it has such a big area. So that's a good thing. Okay, so next up, I'm not sure what, what I'm going to do, uh, <laughs> but I, I, well, I have some different ideas, um, but I suppose you really need to go to like flapping hinges and I kind of want to stay away from that or like a counter rotating version to um, counteract the symmetry of lift, but I haven't figured out a uh, neat way to do that yet. Uh, but I'm, I'm thinking um, like uh, overweighing my op options. Okay, <laughs> see you next time. Bye.